Welcome to my house. Grumpy Buckle here. In this episode, to catch fish, you got to find fish. That's what we're going to talk about here. <clears throat> We've been utilizing some of these techniques all along through the series of Fishing Planet. Uh, today we'll dwell a little more on them. We're down there in Florida doing the Everglades missions. We're going to, about to start mission two. And you know, there's an old saying that 10% of all the fishermen catch 90% of all the fish. And that's pretty much it. In, in a nutshell, that's true. You, you, gotta, you gotta find them to catch them. And with that, there's basically four different methods that you utilize for finding fish. One is location. Two is eyesight, three is reading the water, and of course four is electronics. But we're going to talk about the first three in a little more detail while we're fishing this second mission. So <clears throat> we already got all of our gear, we know what we're after. Now on this mission though, we're after the channel cap, the bow fin, the gaff top sail catfish, and the Florida gar. And we're going to stay there at the lily pad channel and, and catch the first couple there before we move uh, after the channel cap. So let's jump down there. <clears throat> We're ready to go fishing and we'll get this rodeo started. Why isn't it going fishing? There we go. All right, here we are at Lily Pad Channel. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna go after the bowfin first. So we're gonna fish for him over here by this boat. But let's make sure we've got the right setup here. Okay, this hook's gotta go. We're going to change that out for something just a little bit larger. I think we should go with uh, one odd there. And we'll start off with the small cup bait. We'll, we'll keep that. All right. All right, get that on there. And where we're going to hunt for him at is right over here by this sunken boat. Just off to the right of that. And we'll throw out there and... See if we can pull ourselves a bow fin up out of there. All right, fellas. Tight lines. Sticks in the water. Well, we got a ding in here. Let's see what we got. Ooh, easy does it there, fella. Easy does it. I think that's our bow fin. I forgot I didn't have my majesty here. And there's our bowfin. We can mark him off the list. And I'm still not... There he is. There's our bowfin. I've been sitting there bullshitting and I didn't even show where I was at. Not, not paying to the, cam paying to the camera. Let's mark him off the list. Bowfin done. Keep. Alright, you didn't get to see, as I was talking, I had the camera in the wrong place, right here. Right to the right of that boat, so we'll just catch another one since I don't pay attention. Alright, so, there we go, maybe we'll, oh, easy does it. Okay, there's the second one. So, we'll scratch him off the list twice. <laughs> what are we after next? We want the Florida Gar. Well, <clears throat> we can use the same bait. We're just going to turn around, head to the other side of the dock. Ooh. That sun ain't too good. There we go. Hey, see them little tear ups there? That's Florida Gar. So let's go out there and we'll grab one of them up. Why not while we're here? Oh, what I want to talk about a little bit. We'll get started on this while we're waiting for that gar to hit. <clears throat> Four different ways of finding fish. 
and I mentioned in the very beginning of this episode. You got location, eyesight, reading the water, and electronics. Now, location. We've been kind of using a little bit of that along with the third option, reading the waterway all along while we've been going through these series of fishing planet. Um, I've fished a lot of these waterways already, so I've got the location thing down. And you get that when you just fish, you fish waterways a lot. So you, you learn those little, you know, that little where the moderate flow is behind a certain rock. You, you know where that is. Are we going to get something to bite this or are they just pretending that they want to dance? There he is. That ain't no gar. That's another bullhead. Well, oh, bullcrap bullhead. We want the gar. Let's get back out there. Oh, that was a little long, but we'll just have her in a bit and let her sit. Okay, so back to the location. <clears throat> so, and, and you know where that where that dark stream is that runs under that overcut bank. You know where the <clears throat> overcut banks are. So, you you by fishing a waterway more often, you know the locations. However, that process, that method, doesn't do you a whole lot of good when you're on a new waterway. Because you just, like everybody else, you don't know where those sweet spots are. So you got to rely on the other three methods. You've got somebody dinging out there, but he doesn't seem to want to hit hard. So, that's the location. Now, the second one is eyesight. Now, even though you can do this while you're wading out in the stream or if you're moving in a slow moving boat, I mean I use it a lot when I'm bass fishing in a bass boat, and that's eyesight. You you look for shadows in the water. You can see the fish, uh, especially if you've got a good pair of sunglasses and get the glare off the water. You can see down in, especially in, in clear water, you can see a fish tail move, you know, the shadow moves, it twists, you look for the shadow to change. That's a fish down there. You look for water disturbance. I'm concentrating here, see, I don't want to miss one here. Doesn't look like he's going to bite it right now. All right, let me try to get through the rest of this that I wanted to talk about. So, <clears throat> so you can, <clears throat> there, there's a lot of things that with eyesight <clears throat> that you can see, you know, observing on the water. I mean, you, you may see the, you know, a feeding fish rise up from behind a rock out in the middle and you can see him come up and nibble at the top. Oh, there we go. I don't know what we got here. That looks like a bar. You can get him off the list. There we go. A 4.8 pounder, about 244 bucks. We like him. So let's scratch him off the list. Florida Gar, where's he at? Gone. So we need now the two catfish. And we're going to move for those. But I'm going to throw out here just one more time to finish. And then we're going to finish talking about sight and spotting fish with eyesight. So, like I said, you can. You know, you see that fish pop up and he's nibbling on the surface. A lot of times, you know, those fish inhabit a lair close by. And they may come back up a couple of times in that same spot. You know, so you, you that's why it's good to when you're... The best way to use your eyesight is when you're standing still and you scan, you scan 
everything across there. You look for changes in the ripples in the water. Um, you, you look for minor things and there, there's there's a couple of things that you can look for. Like the faint signs of fish would be like the shape near the bottom like I said before. Now on lakes and ponds you get the, the flurry of small bait fish breaking the surface. Now that's telling you that there's game fish under there. I mean if they're jumping out of the water even like here in fishing plant we're watching these fish jump. That's telling you that there's a game fish underneath of them. Okay, and that's on lakes and ponds, and you get the tiny dipples uh, in the windrow. I mean, the edge of it, like waves are breaking. Now, I haven't seen a lot of water here where the waves actually get to breaking any of this water. But out in the real world, you get those small ripples, and it's tough to see out there. But all you need to do is because that that line will run linear, and you see a break in that wave line, that wavelength, the waveform there. That's fish feeding on the surface, so that tells you right away there. They start throwing some surface, or that's where they're feeding at on the surface. Um, if you're seeing disturbances in the lily pads, you know you're seeing water move around and things moving around in the lily pads. That's telling you you got bass underneath there. They're they're feeding. They're feeding in the shallows. So you want to throw, you know, load up your bass rigs for in the shallows. And that's all sight. So you, you use sight. And then what I use is probably <clears throat> what I consider the best method of all. And that's reading the water. And we do that everywhere to every waterway that we go on. We look for those lily pads. We look for the weed beds. We look for overhanging banks. I mean, just around here. I mean, just out in front of us there. You got, you got lily pads. Got a little cove there with that tree sticking up out of there. Whoop, I'm dragging my bobber all around, but that's all right. Now back there. Now this is a good place too. <clears throat> You'll get, because <clears throat> we'll have to get our, you know, peacock bass and everything. It's right off of this spot. You can throw straight out there and, and catch these big peacock bass. And that's where we're going to catch some of them at. All right, but we got another mission. We got to go get a couple of catfish. So let's get this mission done. All righty, we are going to get ourselves over here to the infinite tunnels and for the channel cat, small cut bait. We're just going to throw right out here in the middle. And drag one up. Well, we got a ding here. It didn't take too long. Let's see. Oh, there we go. I'm pretty sure we got him. And there's our channel catfish. So we'll knock Kim off the list. We got one more to do, guys. But we're gallivanting around here. So we're off teleporting again over here to the salty delta. Let's go fishing there. Well, we're gonna go right out here. We're gonna back up. Oop. We got our Nero here, we're just going to change bait to, where is it, there he is, crawfish, get our flipping stick out, and toss it right in here alongside the dock, and we'll just grab one right up out of there. Well, I decided since while we're waiting for this guy to hit, <clears throat> I only got, because that'll complete the mission, I wanted to finish talking about, you know, reading the water thing, which I think is, is the best, the best method of all, is learning how to read water, develop that ability. I mean, because what that is, is it's basically having the ability to instinctively select the good holes. Whoop, there he is. And that completes... Everglades, Florida, Exploration 2.
That one was quick. But we'll keep him. But yeah, that the ability to to be able to determine the good spots from the poor spots, the ones that don't have any fish in them. Yeah, because there's a lot of those spots. So if you can grab the couple of spots on a waterway that you know you you got to think like a fish. Where where is what is that waterway going to provide for that fish? And when you look at a waterway before, like I said before you, before you even fish it, like we just came here, I just ran down near to the dock, like I tell everybody not to do, because this is our first time here. But you know, come around here and assess what you've got. Look, you've got trees hanging up out of there. Very good sign with weed beds around, lily pads to the right. All those little holes along there are going to hold fish. Every one of those little coves are going to hold fish. This is a sweet place, especially on this side here. There are big fish here. And this is where we're going to fish the third mission. And I've already got and this is where the big guns come out. And actually, this picture right here that we're looking at is my Facebook Trumpy Buckle page. When the sun comes up here at 6 o'clock in the morning, it's pretty awesome. Anyway, so we talked about the four ways of locating, finding fish. You know, to catch fish, you got to find fish. And when you add those combinations, you try to get better at location. Of course, the more you fish somewhere, the better you're going to get at that. Eyesight. Practice that. Practice looking for disturbances in the water, on top of the water, in the, in the weed beds, in the grass, in the lily pads, in the cattails. Look around. Pay attention to your environment when you're there. Before you even start throwing a pole in. Before you pull a stick out. See what's going on on the, on the waterway, on the lake. And then, of course, you know, you read all that water. And then the last one, you know, we don't, we, we, we have them in the boat here in Fiction Planet. I haven't really done enough testing to, to, to know if they're really accurate or not. I mean, I have a fish finder on my boat. Yeah, it shows me that there's fish out there. Um, I don't know. You know, the real electronics that we use, they're great. I mean, you can tell the difference between, and that's where you want to fish when you've got rock and grass, the bottoms where the bottom changes, it, you know, that tells you a lot, not just how deep something is, but what's down there. So, <clears throat> and that, anyway, I hope you got some value out of this. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, you know the routine there. That helps me out. I can keep, as long as I keep getting viewers and subscribers, then Buckle Bunny, little Wheezy Mouse 50, she won't get so mad at me when I do my fishing. So, Thanks for fishing with Uncle Buck, and we'll be back for the third mission.